Today we will follow the story of Rick Gladiator who went through hellish training with the legendary group Oracalcum, the most powerful on the continent that made Rick as powerful as an S-rank adventurer. But Rick begins his journey in F-rank in a world where everyone thought that achieving his dreams required starting at a young age, but this middle-aged former guild employee refused to give up. But how will Rick face his challenges after learning from these legendary beings? And before we start the July season, I ask you to leave your subscription in addition to liking and commenting a lot to help our channel continue to grow. But now let's get to the anime. After two years of brutal training that almost took Rick's life, his mentors comment that he has developed very well and would certainly have no problems with this E-rank test and perhaps even end up destroying the arena. Although Rick thinks he was not at the level your masters. But let's move forward a little in a place where everyone imagines that to follow your dreams it's better to start when you're young. Especially for adventurers whose body is their work tool. But even so there were adults who didn't give up and this was the case of by Rick. Who leaves the receptionist Elisa surprised when she turns in his application for the E-rank classification test. But as Rick was her two-year veteran, she admits that she was surprised by the way he resigned, but which left. Her even more surprise was when she found out that he was going to become an adventurer, which Rick imagined. After all it was unthinkable to start as an adventurer in his early 30s, since people started as F-rank apprentices in their teens and became E-rank adventurers, after two years. Which awakens Elisa's curiosity about what he did during that time, and Rick responds that he trained in the mountains with his companions, and a drunk interrupts them and starts hitting on the girl insistently. But Rick asks him to calms down and when he touches the drunk's belly he passes out, leaving everyone curious about what had happened. But Rick believed that he had drunk too much and after receiving his card for the classification test, he finds his companion Rhea neat and ends up looking where he doesn't. Should, but meanwhile everyone was wondering how that hand got into the drunkard's steel armor, who was actually a former A-rank adventurer named Domald, the wild knight who was being wanted for assault leaving Elisa surprised to wonder if Rick had done this. But the next day, Rick goes through the evaluation and when he goes to measure his amount of magical energy, the crystal ball emits a weak light that quickly dissipates and the evaluator is frustrated when he says that his classification would be F, making the other adventurers laugh at the old man. But as soon as Rick leaves the room the crystal ball breaks. And then he moves on to the strength check where the evaluator asks them to land their most powerful blow on the bag of green goo that was capable of absorbing powerful attacks while Rick remembered his master telling him that it didn't matter what weapon or magic he used. After all, the basis of everything would be your own body, and when you managed to destroy that golden bag of goo with your own hands you would be sure that you had built a body you could trust. After all that was the basics for adventurers, and with one slap you destroy the body. Punching bag leaving Rick in shock, so the man tells Rick to start with 50,000 punches a day, which was real hell. But we return to the test where the son of a duke considered a prodigy of just 11 years old and magic equivalent to rank C started his magical flames of hell leaving everyone impressed with his third nature magic, which despite its brilliance ends up being a small ball of fire that hits the punching bag, but everyone thinks he is a genius as Rick remembered his master attacking him with a large fireball, but perhaps the boy had suppressed it to use it indoors which would actually glow and so they continue the assessment with Rick thinking the bag of green goo was impressive and finally, it's his turn, but the evaluator questions if he really started as an adventurer at the age of 30, which Rick confirms, so the man advises him to give up, after all, the result of his magic test had been terrible, which was no surprise since only it was possible to evolve when you started. Young by doing Rick I think he was right and he remembers his training again and that he really started late, but what would be the problem with that? After all, it doesn't matter how old you are to start something new and with just one punch, Rick destroys the bag of goo as well as the wall of the assessment room, leaving everyone in shock as he wonders if the bag had the defect. But the child prodigy wonders who this guy was that stole all the attention, but he didn't care about that, after. All, his true specialty was defense magic. And then the boy is shocked that the old man defended a fourth nature spell, something that even he couldn't, while the evaluator admitted that he was amazing, and so he decides to use a fifth nature spell and recommends that Rick use a higher level defense spell and embarrassed, Rick admits that he could only use first nature magic, leaving the wizard surprised since he possessed a level of impressive accuracy, but Rick tells him that he didn't need to worry and felt that he would be fine. Leaving the wizard outraged that he was underestimating him and decides to give it his all in the next blow that causes a mega explosion that was able to destroy the test barrier. Catching the attention of the first class knight Sylvester, who asks what had happened and what noise it was that should not be heard in a test, but when they tell him about the F-rank adventurer, who destroyed the green slime bag and then defended himself from a fifth nature spell with a first time one, 
He questions if it was some joke of the guild, but what really intrigues him would be the age of the 32-year-old candidate who worked for 14 years as a guild receptionist, and he even asks if. Receptionist was a title given to someone who eliminated a dragon which the girl denies by the way. Let's go to a brief explanation, where the green slime bag has the lowest level of resistance while the gold would be the strongest, but we go back to Rick. That after the theoretical test he meets his companion Rhea Neat and tells the girl that he certainly got a 10 in the written test. After all he was a former office worker and wonders if he would be able to pass this first phase since he got F in magic ability. But Rhea Neat believed that everything would be okay since he has shown an amazing growth in these last two years. But the little boy prodigy goes to Rick calling him a commoner, and Rick tries to remember the boy's name that it was. Something within you making the boy indignant since his name was freed and by the way nothing within you, but Rick questions if he needed help to find his parents and even offers to help him, but the boy was angry because he had planned to show off in this test, after all he was a prodigy, and with that he would have his magnificent debut and starts crying, while saying that he stood out a lot and ruined his plan leaving Rick desperate. But a girl comes up and says that Rick had a lot of courage for. Making her brother cry and introduces herself as Angelica, Freed's older sister, who says that that old man of almost 40 years mistreated him, leaving Rick indignant, after all he was in his early 30s, but Angelica calls him a terrible old man and decides to challenge him to a duel by throwing his glove at Rick, who questions how things got to this point and when he takes the girl's glove. He says that she ended up dirtying it and the daughter of a nobleman must not have known that it was a lot of work to do laundry, but Rianit warns him that when he took the glove he ended up accepting the challenge, leaving Rick confused. And so they go to the arena where Angelica presents herself as a second-class knight who would punish this ordinary of almost 40 years, and according to the rules of the kingdom's duels each participant could create a requirement after the victory, and his requirement would be that the loser becomes the other's vassal until the end of his life. But Rick didn't know what the knights of the kingdom were. So Rhea Neat the explains that they acted as protectors of peace in the kingdom, and a second. Class knight would be on the same level as a B-rank adventurer, making Rick desperate. After all, an adventurer of this rank was capable of defeating high-level monsters alone, and Rianit asks him to go easy on her, despite Rick believing that an F-rank adventurer would never stand a chance against a knight. But Rianit tells him to remember his training of the last two years, making Rick vomit when remembering his infernal trainings, while Rianit said that now he should be less tense and should have confidence in himself. After all he was part of the group that prided itself on being the strongest on the continent, the fist of Orichalca making Rick thank her, and so he walks up to Angelica, while thinking he was going to face a second-class rider despite having no idea of where could she get to and Angelica says that since he was an F-rank adventurer, she would do him the favor of going easy on him and prepares his move, while Rick noticed that she was the type of swordsman who strengthened his body and weapon, while Angelica questioned if he would be able to keep up with his speed. And this way she uses her instant jump that doesn't hit Rick and she says that she was considerate of starting with something slower, and the cut ends up cutting the bars in front of the girl, who questions if he was so impressed that he lost his speech making her brother laugh when he brags that Angelica, that she was so fast that they called her a flash and the girl says that the next one would not miss on purpose, while Rick wiped his eyes and on the second blow. Rick thinks that she was much slower than when he ran normally, but the boy had mentioned something flashy and Rhea Neat reminds him of the battle and Rick dodges without any difficulty leaving the girl impressed that he has read her movement, which she finds impossible. After all, few first-class knights could react and says that he may have dodged his blow by miracle, but he would have had no other chance and goes back to attacking with her instant step, but Rick just confirms that she was really slow and wonders how she managed to become a knight with that alone, but maybe he can be really powerful which he dismisses when Angelica ends up tripping over a rock and starts a sequence of random blows while rolling, leaving Rick in shock that he couldn't read her moves, so sure enough. She was someone amazing and admits that he was very arrogant in thinking he was strong while Angelica was embarrassed for tripping, but she decides to pretend that she did it on purpose and says that. He really was impressive and decides to move even faster, with an ability that he could only use three times and when he activated it, Rick thinks that she could even be three times faster but she was still slow, but even so, if he tried something, she could unleash another one of that impressive move, and she dodges again, making the girl wonder who that man was and ends up feeling the effects of his special move, but he decides to insist on his blows and Rick continues to dodge. But in the third blow, he decides to confront her with a punch, but the girl ends up tripping again, which causes Rick to miss the punch, causing a big explosion that makes Angelica terrified of that crater, since if she hadn't tripped, 
He would have hit her with what would end her and questions who he would be and Rick replies that two years ago, he stopped being a guild receptionist to become an adventurer and was now a simple F-rank adventurer, which the girl didn't believe, while Rick said that the second-class knights were really it was no wonder that she had dodged her blow. She didn't know if she had the ability to face her. But she would use this as a learning experience to give everything she has, making the girl so desperate that she ends up surrendering, making Rick question the reason, while she said that this time she would allow him to come out victorious since he managed to dodge his instant steps, so she would be tolerant of this time and asks her brother to leave. But Rick reminds her, remembers the arrangement and decides to use the same one she had asked for, where the loser would serve the winner for the rest of his life, but Angelica asks her legs to overcome their limits and runs desperately, while Rianit reminded him that the approved test would soon be announced, and in fact, his mentors were arriving to see how he was doing, leaving Rick terrified by admitting that he was having a bad feeling, especially because he didn't know if he would pass. By defeating the supreme monster, this person would gain the treasure capable of fulfilling any wish and one of the children who dreams of being an adventurer will have his dream come true, but meanwhile in the rank test it was announced through the registration cards those approved for the second phase that it would be a simulated battle which leaves Rick distressed. But Rionette tries to console him and says that if he doesn't pass they would just have to triple his training leaving Rick. Terrified, but of course he is approved. And as soon as they leave the room, a man goes to Rionette and introduces himself as Raster, the eldest son of the noble house Diarmut who ruled the northern lands, and in his snobbish way, he starts hitting on Rionette, and when Rick tries to introduce himself, Raster says he had no interest in a boring middle-aged man, leaving Rick disappointed. While Raster says he lost his heart in Rionette's eyes and would like her to become his second wife, but Rick notices that it bothered the girl so. Decides to intervene making Raster angry but he says that she was his girlfriend so he couldn't keep quiet when someone hit on her and Raster starts laughing at Rick when he notices that he was taking the promotion test so he was nothing more than an old F-rank apprentice and Rick replies that he should have about 25 years old, then it also started late but Raster replies that he really was someone third rank and couldn't determine the strength of another person since he had his E-rank promotion at 14 and was now A-rank in addition to being one of the examiners of the second test, so he should disappear from there, and tells the elven maiden to leave this extra aside and go to dinner with him what Rionette refuses, and when hugging Rick she says that as he could see she was already accompanied leaving Raster indignant, while she continued to say that in addition the smell of her cologne was so strong that it was unpleasant and. Rick asks if this smell was his making Raster furious, and tells. Rick that it would be better for him to be prepared in case he is her examiner, and by doing this maybe the girl comes to her senses and as she leaves, Rick is embarrassed to be in Rionette's arms and apologizes for saying she was his girlfriend without asking her beforehand, and Rionette admits that it made her happy and saved her from trouble. And that night Raster was still angry and his two brothers are crying to him to tell him about the old man of almost 40 years old who intimidated them and tried to use the dueling pact to subject his sister to pure indignity making Raster furious, since making the members of the noble Diarmut family cry was unforgivable, but at least now he knew what the number of the middle-aged man's test was. And before we continue, leave your registration to help with our goal of 2000 subscribers and don't forget to like and comment a lot that this helps me a lot to continue with the daily videos, but now let's go to the anime. And the next day Rick was terrified of the possibility of taking that guy as an instructor, but a man goes up to him and introduces himself as Lynx and would be his examinee in the second test leaving Rick relieved and very happy while the examiner said he was surprised to find out that he changed from receptionist to adventurer at 30 and Rick replies that he knew he was left behind but the examiner thought his determination was magnificent and as another middle-aged man, he gave him courage and wished to become someone like him and in fact he started as an adventurer at the age of 24, and surely he must have been motivated by a powerful emotion to enter this world at 30 which Rick agrees and says he has a dream and Lynx replies that he could understand it after all it was the same with him who turned 40, but to fulfill his dream he would have to reach rank A despite having taken almost 20 years to finally reach rank B, but even so he had no intention of giving up on his dream making. Rick recognized that he also had an improper determination for his age and is anxious for his guidance leaving Lynx excited despite telling him that he would not have favoritism, but in the background Raster heard them talking, and after saying goodbye to Rick the instructor he notes that his hand was that of someone who trained hard but ends up being surprised by Raster who calls him third category and should be honored to be talking to him. And meanwhile, Rionette noticed that Rick seemed in a good mood, which didn't last long, as they announced that Lynx got sick and Raster Diarmut would take over making Rionette remember that by his second name he should be brother too, two that they met the day before, leaving Rick distressed, while they commented that Raster reached rank A at 17 and became known as the man of a thousand skills, in addition to his nickname, F-rank crusher, but the worst would be the rumors that every year he 
had fun chasing the girls who caught his attention, and on the battlefield Raster eliminated everyone without any mercy, and one of his elite guards goes to talk to him. While Rick wondered what he should do since his opponent was A-rank and hated him, and he was nothing more than an F-rank who could only use two of the first nature spells and Rionette asks if he didn't feel confident, and Rick admits that everyone always said that as he started late it would be impossible for him which made him swayed then Rionette advises him to do the opposite, and if the words of others can disturb his confidence then, they could also give him confidence, and she believed in him and his strength and that she would pass the test beating the man from the colony, after all he has been doing it since the day he decided to become an adventurer, and asks if he trusted her which regains the trust of Rick who thanks her. But a hooded person interrupts them and with a dubious speech he convinces Rick to accept that he reads his fortune but Rionette notices a magic circle in the chair, but it ends up being too late and the circle is activated making the boy who would actually be freed in disguise laugh that he has fallen into his trap, but Rionette holds him and ends up destroying the wall and enraged she questions where he sent Rick with the teleportation magic and the boy questions why he would count and with. Just the swing of his finger Rionette causes a wind that cuts the boy's eyelashes and says that the next one would be his eye making the boy desperate, then he starts to say that the teleportation magic was very difficult so even for a prodigy like him he could only send someone 100 meters away. And Rick ends up behind the test site and a group surrounds him and apologizes but they would have to put him to sleep and introduce themselves as the elite personal guards of the Diarmut family. After all there was no need to bother Mr. Raster with someone like him who would fail the test without even having participated and for that they would beat him up leaving Rick distressed when they comment that the force of each one is equivalent to someone of B rank although there are those who compare themselves with an A rank which was the case of the leader making Rick think he was lost. But he is surprised by the arrival of his mentors who ask why Rionette was not around, which leaves Rick in shock and the ogre questions what he was doing there, after all he had a test to do and Rick tries to justify himself. But a man questions who they would be and if they wanted to be eliminated and Rick tries to defend the guards by saying they were only helping him warm up before the test, which leaves the man confused. But the ogre says that in this case he would also help him leaving. Rick terrified by telling their leader to retreat for their lives. But the man ignores him and attacks the ogre with his sword that is completely annihilated just by touching the ogre leaving the man surprised, but even so the man tries to punch the ogre who crushes his hand making him go into shock, but the ogre asks him not to worry, and heals his hand completely while giving advice for him to get stronger leaving everyone in disbelief that that ogre could speak and use magic and the old man can't believe that it could be them but the elf asks Rick if this was. One of those situations where he had problems and they invent a pretext to fight which Rick confirms then the elf asks him to stay calm since he would peacefully solve with his rifle that Rick didn't know what it was, but the elf says that this was his new creation and starts shooting at the guards leaving Rick not believing what he was seeing confirming the leader's suspicions, but a man tells them to stay still otherwise he would eliminate the little girl and Rick and the ORC advise him to release the girl for his own good and the girl asks what was happening and Rick says that he just wanted to play with her which makes the girl excited, but the man tells her to be quiet and holds her with force making the girl furious, then she activates her magic leaving everyone terrified that she had cast a magic of seventh nature just saying Toma and the leader reveals that she was 10 years old and was the most powerful vampire, prodigy mage and was known as the demon child of devastation. Alicerette and despite her appearance that half-elf half-dwarf was 50 years old and his techniques were a millennium ahead of his time, and he was the greatest weapons craftsman in the world and they knew him as the millennial workshop of Mizzet, and there was also that ORC who possessed monstrous physical strength and intelligence to match that was able to use all existing support magics the beast knew Bruffston, and all would be S-rank. Adventurers the monsters who possessed the sense of battle. That defied logic and were the members of a group composed only of S-ranks, the strongest group on the continent, the legendary fist of Aura Calcum and admits that he never imagined that he would meet them personally, and now he could retire and live the rest of his years in peace making his companion recognize his sincere gaze. But in the meantime Alicerat had fun releasing various spells and finishing them all and Rick says that now would give his best in the test. But meanwhile Freed questioned how long Rionette would hold him and she replies that it would be until Rick's return and the boy says that she would not return since where she sent him was full of her guards. But he ends up being surprised by the arrival of Rick who is unharmed and Rionette throws him away and welcomes Rick who was curious about that hole. But the two are interrupted by Lynx who is injured and reveals that Raster had done that to him, and as you can see he didn't have the slightest chance making Rick wonder if he did all this to be his examiner, and Lynx says that when he did that he asked what his dream would be, and he replied that he came from a poor and remote area where there were children who dreamed of being adventurous and that's why he wants to create a school for them. But Raster told him that he was nothing more than a third-rate scum who started late and still wanted to build a school, which would be terrible, since if they were taught by someone third-rate, they would also become third-class, and without any mercy he started beating Lynx, 
since he believed that these elderly people like him only made the world worse and worse. Although this made the man furious, he couldn't answer anything and maybe he really is right and it's unwise for someone like him to have a dream and advises Rick to give up the test after all what happened to him had been nothing, but Rick replies that he believed it didn't matter if a person starts something new sooner or later, and starts walking to the arena while Raster discovers that Rick had managed to arrive in time to have his hard work and passion trampled on, and decides to give him a taste of the suffering he would face but Rick was enraged and decided to make that good for nothing fly away. And so we end another episode. Thank you very much to those who stayed this far and don't forget that final help with your like, registration and sharing. Thank you and see you next time.